Hello everybody, today I'll be testing one of the most anticipated releases of 2012 and that is Kaspersky Internet Security 2013. Now I had done a test on the beta and uh, this is the final version. It was released a few days ago and let's see what changes Kaspersky have brought in. Now they've added a module known as Safe Money just double click on it and it basically opens up a sandbox browser if you click on this it's going to take you to your browser but as you can see there are green lines around it indicating that it is basically sandboxed and uh, it runs with higher security and lower privileges so it's useful for online transactions and all that so that no keylogger steal your data so that's basically all that this module does now other than that they've added a secure keyboard system watcher was always there parental controls have been improved and so has been the anti-spam module and anti-phishing protection has been improved as well and this is something very handy and this is probably the response from Kaspersky to the zero day exploits automatic exploit prevention now this is a module that uh, well is kind of like a zero day module for exploits and it controls the launch of executable files and analyzes the behavior of them and uh, it restricts applications according to you know what they're trying to do so it's basically kind of like a sandbox and restriction they previously had all these technologies but I think the implementation has been improved in this version now minimal impact on PC performance now this is not very true in fact uh, it's a lot lighter than the beta as usual but uh, it's still one of the heaviest security suites you'll find and uh, this is something very needed optimized antivirus databases uh, Kaspersky used to have a huge database and now they've brought it down and the update times have gone down with that as well reduced battery drain I haven't used this on a laptop so I have no idea how well it works and the interface has been improved not much really but uh, quick launch of virtual keyboard that's nothing much to care about compatible with Windows 8 and this what was expected that they would bring in with the new version and they've done that so that's basically the change log now let's take a look at the program you can see you get the desktop gadget and the interface is still almost the same as the 2012 version You've got your tabs here and one really nice thing that I found out about this new version is that you no longer have a safe run for applications and a safe run, safe run for websites now in what way is that good I know it, I might be sounding a bit silly but uh, in fact what they've done is that is what exactly I was hoping they'd do for years because they had all these technologies all the way back in 2011 even but it never used to be very useful but now if we take a look in the detail settings okay just give me a minute here okay so now the sandboxed uh, browsing and all that it has been added into the application so now the sandbox works a lot better now let's just go through the hierarchy of settings before we go into the details here general settings protection is enabled and I'm going to change a few settings for this test I'm not recommending you to change that but since I'm doing a test and I want the test results to be accurate I will delete all possibly infected objects and I'm going to delete everything now this is not recommended for you to do but I'm just going to do this for this test because I know I'm not going to run into salady or anything and I know that this system is clean but if you're using it this is the recommended option so we're going to delete all file threats 
and uh, male antivirus I don't really care about that and web antivirus we're going to block the downloads now Kaspersky is set to take a lot of decisions on its own so I'm basically going to just uh, block everything application control this is the interesting part and this is the zero day module of Kaspersky it does restrict applications based on rules from the Kaspersky security network which is their cloud and it automatically trusts applications with a digital signature and for unknown applications now here you go heuristic analysis to determine whether it's going to be low restricted highly restricted or you know untrusted or just basically allowed and if you turn this on this basically becomes uh, just like Komodo if you move it to the following move all unknown applications to the following group automatically so this is just uh, the equivalent of Komodo sandbox if you hit this button I don't know how well it works but uh, theoretically it is the equivalent of Komodo sandbox and you can automatically move all unknown files to low restricted or high restricted or basically just not trust them but I will use the heuristic analysis because uh, you know using this has its own disadvantages because a lot of files may be legit and they still may be restricted and they may not function so I'll use the way Kaspersky recommends me to use it now other than that they've got the system watcher which basically allows you to roll back settings after a malware infection and it uses the behavior stream signature so I'm going to delete everything that's suspicious you've got a firewall which is really decent and a network attack blocker might be handy anti-spam anti-banner safe money so that's the basic stuff now Kaspersky always had these features it's uh, nothing new but I think the implementation has improved quite a bit so we'll see how the zero day module responds this time and other than that let me just show you that it's up to date it is but I'll just run it anyway the update process is still slow and uh, the reason for that is simple Kaspersky although it doesn't have a huge database the reason for that is it downloads one by one file so it doesn't have a huge you know packed database it downloads uh, several files during the installation and that's what causes the speeds to drop so it can be fairly slow even uh, on a faster internet connection but uh, right now it has improved a lot from the last version so I'm not going to complain about that too much I've got the basic cloud should be done now come on don't get stuck oh well I guess I'll just pause so the application is now up to date it was but uh, as you know Kaspersky's got the longest update check and that's basically it uh, other than the desktop gadget that's all that you get now let's take a look at how exactly it affects the system performance now the memory usage is very high and uh, you can see that very clearly here it's using about 100 megs of RAM and uh, that's never good at all but uh, it has improved from the beta I mean the beta was just chewing at the CPU all the time but uh, this has improved on that but I know this application can be a huge memory hog okay it's dropped right now it's using about 45 not too bad but uh, it's really heavy I have to say right now I'm not doing anything that the but the moment I start downloading files I do a scan I do anything at all the computers just gonna respond very terribly at that instance and Kaspersky is going to start chewing at the resources but anyway they don't give you any toolbar which is good I don't really like those security toolbars that just annoyance really so now I'll just go to malware blacklist and we'll try the latest links
this test, uh, well, I should maybe tell you guys that this might be a long test and it might be slow and boring sometimes because uh, Kaspersky is very slow to respond and this is just a computer that meets uh, the absolute minimum system requirements for Kaspersky that is one gig of RAM. So the test might be slow, but hopefully you guys won't mind. The first one, some kind of image, we'll wait and see if that's anything important, it isn't. I don't know what to call this really. Two images there. Terrible start. Okay, this one's an infected HTML, virus, VBS, red loft, whatever they call it. It has been blocked. Not going to try these images because I don't know in what way they're infected really. Okay, this one was caught and detected as well. It was trying to probably download a Trojan. There you go. And Kaspersky successfully caught it and terminated the connection. Now the next one is another variant of the first uh, website that we tried. This one's dead. And this one's a Trojan exploit and that has been blocked by Kaspersky. Here's an exe file. Let's see what happens with this one. Okay, this one was also trying to download a Trojan, and this one was detected and blocked. No idea what this page is. Let's see if it tries to drop anything. Meanwhile, let's try out the next link. Okay, this one is caught. It's another page infected by virus VBS Redloff. Okay, this one's probably a false positive. I don't see anything dangerous here. Here's another EXE. Now, this one's dead probably because I didn't get any alert from Kaspersky. Okay, this one was blocked. It's a dangerous web page. Here's an exe file. Let's try out the next one, which is also an executable. And something got blocked here. Okay, it's the second one that's been caught and blocked. Now the first one's still loading and it's most probably dead. Here's an, another HTML. And this one looks like an exploit, and there you go. And this one was blocked. It's some kind of exploit, exploit Trojan. And this one was caught and blocked by Kaspersky. Okay, this one's most probably dead, so I'm going to close that one. And now let's try out the next file, which is another executable. OK, 
Kaspersky does slow down my browser a lot, especially because it's not a very fast system, so in case you're using anything like the configuration of my virtual machine, I wouldn't recommend Kaspersky. You need a fast system if you want to use this. At least about 2 gigs of RAM, and almost everybody has it nowadays, so it's not that big a deal. Okay, all the executable seems to be dead. Or maybe it's just slowing down because of Kaspersky analyzing it. I'll just close down both of these and try the next one in a new tab. Here's a Java file. Okay. This one was trying to drop a file and it will be deleted on reboot. Let's try out this uh, JS file, which is most probably a Java exploit. Okay, this one is caught. Trojan downloader, JS agent, typical. Java exploit there. This one seems to be dead, so I'll just close it. Okay, let's uh, run this file and see what uh, Kaspersky does, because most probably this is not caught by the signatures. I'm not sure if it's infected, but we'll find out. Okay, this one was caught by antivirus web filtering. This one was also, okay, this was not cut. So as you can see, the downloads are slowing down quite a bit because of Kaspersky analyzing this. And if you're running a system like the one I am, you probably don't want to be seeing this each time you download a file. So fast system is highly recommended in case you want to use Kaspersky. So just give me a break, I'll just get these things sorted out and I'll show you guys if Kaspersky finds anything. Okay, welcome back guys. Uh, one of the applications that I was downloading was cut and this is the second one. And as you can see, this is not cut by the signatures. And uh, I've just opened up activation applications activity from Kaspersky and you can open up open it up from the interface very easily so now this basically shows you all the process they're running and uh, how they're being treated so you can see everything is in green and it's trusted and it also tells you how many users uh, basically use this program and uh, according to that it decides the ratings so Right now, this application that I started got into low restricted. I haven't selected it. It was automa automatically moved into the low restricted. So there you go. You, you can get some more info if you take your cursor here. And uh, you can read this if you want. It's a big paragraph. And basically, if something's not digitally signed and not highly recognized, it's going to be restricted. So it's kind of like where it's like uh, the Komodo firewall, but I don't know if it's that good. Let's try running this. I'm not sure that this is malicious, but just wanted to show you guys what happens when something unknown is installed. 
This most probably just a corrupted version of WinRAR. I don't think it's an infected file, but we'll find out later on. So right now, I guess I'll just uh, pause, and I'll run CCleaner and do a scan with Hitman Pro, and I'll show you guys the results. First, of course, I'll have to reboot, because Kaspersky wanted me to do that. So I'll reboot, run CCleaner, and all the regular stuff, and then I'll just show you guys the results from Hitman Pro. So I'll be right back. Well, Hitman Pro has just finished its scan and it hasn't found anything. Now I know you're seeing these two things and you might be saying, oh, it has found something, but the first one is, if you notice the location, it's in Program Data Kaspersky Lab, so it's one of the Kaspersky signatures that has been cut, so it's uh, one of the Kaspersky signatures, so this is not an infection. Secondly, it's cut this uh, file that I just ran, and uh, the only place where it's located is in the downloads where I just saved it. Now, other than that, it hasn't uh, really infiltrated the system, and it was blocked by Kaspersky's zero-day component restricted and uh, since then it wasn't able to make any new files or do anything at all so it's just about sitting here so this is not technically any infection so well Kaspersky so far has been perfect in the prevention now I'll just uh, grab some files I haven't got any new ones I'll have to get the ones that uh, I used in the last test so just hold on Welcome back to everybody. I just grabbed uh, my malware and it's the same malware that I used in my last test so it's now about three days old. So I am expecting a great detection by Kaspersky. So let's see what we get. Kaspersky scan is going to be terribly slow. So I guess I'll just uh, pause and I'll be back when this is done. Welcome back everybody. I just did a couple of scans and you can see everything that was cut has been removed by Kaspersky. So we're left with 50 items and I've already done the math and that came up to 89.58%. So the signatures are really good but uh, they're not the best right now but it's somewhere just behind that. And well, that's about it. I'm not going to run these files because I know they're all going to go into at least low restricted. Unless, of course, there's something that is recognized by Kaspersky as safe in that, which I don't think there is. So, it's been a long test. Hopefully, you've got your worth out of it. And uh, so Kaspersky continues to be one of the top competitors in the industry. And uh, I'd like to answer one question that I'm getting all the time in, you know, my channel. Everybody just asks me, which is better, Kaspersky or Bitdefender? I think uh, resource usage-wise, Bitdefender is a lot lighter and easy to use than Kaspersky. So if you've got a slow computer, I'd recommend Bitdefender, but Kaspersky's zero day is a lot better than Bitdefender's. It's a lot less confusing. It's got a very good sandbox technology, and it does very well in disinfecting threats. So if you've got the resources, certainly Kaspersky is over a Bitdefender. But then again, it depends on you. If you really like a lightning fast computer, I wouldn't recommend Kaspersky right now. But other than that, security-wise, this is a very strong application, make no mistake. So, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Have a nice day, and I'll be doing some more reviews later. Keep your suggestions coming. Thanks for watching.